Hello and welcome to the CNBC TV 18 special. We continue our coverage here from the World Economic Forum in Davos. Uh, and joining me now for our annual conversation is Sunil Mittal. Mr. Mittal, always a pleasure. Many thanks for joining us here in Davos. Uh, you know, if I were to pick up on the words that describe the mood here in Davos, caution, pessimism, uncertainty, would that sum up your mood as well? No, no, my mood is relaxed. <laughs> so, but yes, Davos is, feels a bit different this year. Uh, I wasn't talking about Davos. <laughs> I, I, I feel relaxed. In, in general? Yeah. Back home as well? Back home as well. Yeah. Okay. So let me talk to you about what, what is happening with the business now. And I'll start by asking you about deleveraging because that is a key concern. And Moody's has red flagged that issue as well. So what can we expect in terms of the three-pronged strategy that you've laid out for deleveraging? And I'll start by asking you about the African IPO. Well, first of all, Africa has already raised pre-IPO money, mm -hmm. $1.25 billion, which has gone to deleverage. The $5 billion debt, we are in Africa down to $3.7 billion, out of which $700 million is FLO for towers, which is not a real debt to be repaid, but just to be adjusted over time. So $3 billion debt there uh, at some point in time, 2019, we will have our IPO. It was expected in the first half. Is it now been pushed to the second half? Is that the expectation? Uh, I can't say. I think some pre-road shows are in the offing in the coming weeks. I would say we should uh, stay to our schedule. Which is the second half? No. Or could the be, first half? It would be in the middle. In the middle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we always said June, July. We never had said, I don't know, there were some reports that we'll do it early in the year. Mm -hmm. There's an election in Nigeria happening in February. There are one or two other political development, and then we have to have March closing. Mm. So it is always June, July. It was never February, March. Okay, so yeah. June, July is the expectation. What's the expectation on valuation given the fact that you uh, did uh, pre IPO around at 1.25 billion? Yeah, so take that as a, I would say, uh, lead into the valuation which uh, some private investors have given. Now, depending on when you arrive at that point in time, what are the uh, performance metrics in Africa, mm. how are the markets, it will all be decided at that point in time. You know, let's talk about the performance metrics in Africa because that, in a sense, has offset the trouble that you're faced with in India. And you've seen your margins go up to almost about 30-odd percent. Is there room for you to be able to do more, eke out more, as far as the African side of the business is concerned? Well, I think the last two years, Africa has seen a remarkable uh, you know, repair and turnaround. And... Uh, is there a scope for doing better? There are countries which are not kicking in. Some of those countries should kick in over a period of time. So mm. I would say uh, there is always a scope to improve. Okay. Now let's talk about India. Uh, do you believe that we perhaps have seen the worst as far as the bloodletting is concerned? Or do you believe that till Geo gets to that 50% market share aspiration, this is going to continue? Well, I mean, I really can't say anything for Geo. It really is their strategy, what they want to do. But I would say uh, we are now in a market uh, structure which is absolutely where we wanted it to be many years back. Mm. You've spoken about consolidation for over 10 years. You spoke right here. You told yeah. me that 2018 would be the year of consolidation and then the idea of Vodafone happened. Yeah. What are you telling me this year? What is, what is 2019 going to be about? I think three players which are there now. They're all mature three players. One is uh, you know, moving rapidly from nothing to 30%. One has moved from 40 to 30%. Mm. We are more or less stayed in the axis of 30 plus percent. So there are three uh, players out there now. And uh, how this uh, will adjust going forward, let's see. My own view is that uh, some more percentage gain and losses will happen mm. in this process. Let the best man win. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the, the gains and losses, and, you know, again, I ask you this, and I asked you this question last year as well on the ARPU trajectory. Given what we are seeing, the dynamics play out in India, you've gone from about 200 uh, in F515 to down to about 100-odd currently. Is, are we likely to see it go even lower from here? Well, there's no sign of that. Uh, we have taken a minimum uh, plan of 35 rupees now. Gone are the days when you could have 5 rupees, 7 rupees, and you just are sitting on the network freeloading. That's gone now. You need to pay a little bit uh, to be on the network. This 35, should, in my mind, should go to 75 someday. Uh, also, remember, at 200 rupees, it was more like 250, mm. uh, you used to consume 800 MB of data. Now at 100 bucks, you're consuming 11, 12 gigabytes of data a month. So you're consuming 10, 11 times more and paying half, less than half. Mm. So I would say at some point in time, depending on when, uh, this should come back to 250, 300 rupees. It'll still be the lowest tariffs anywhere in the world. And per megabyte uh, charges would be a fraction of what people pay in the world. Mm. You spoke about market share and, uh, you know, you're now in the 30s band and uh, Geo has gone up in the 20s band. No, in the 30s now. Uh, yeah. All right, in the 30s. So, so what, what do you do to hold on to the market share that you have and perhaps even hope to better it? 
Well, I would say this is not the time to claim that you better your market share. This is the time to say we will hold on to our market share. Seven quarters, eight quarters, we have held on to our 30% plus share. A lot of people have lost, including Voda ID, have lost from where they were when they announced. So I think we are holding pretty well. Our 4G networks are doing well. What about 5G? Because Mr. Ambani at the Vibrant Gujarat said that they're ready for a 5G rollout as well. Well, it'll be very nice to see uh, the 5G rollout in India as and when that happens. All I would say is uh, we track technology closely. I personally participate in uh, the technology development. As the chairman of GSMA, I've seen the development. Right now, uh, the mobile use case is still being developed. Mm. 5G is a technology which is looking for uh, services. It's not the other way around. Nobody's coming and telling us, I want this, so give me 5G. Mm. So let's see what Verizon and AT&T and KT and SKT and SwapBank find on the other side of use cases. Mm. Uh, India still needs to give bra mobile broadband in the hands of more and more people. Mm. And there is really nothing available in the marketplace of services which cannot be fulfilled in 4G mm. comfortably and in a very satisfying manner. Now, robotic uh, surgeries, autonomous cars, nuclear plants management, drone fleet management, the day it comes, I think we'll all be ready with 5G. <laughs> okay, so you're not expecting uh, anything significant to move on that front anytime soon? No, I'm saying the problem is suddenly when people t start to talk about 5G, the regulators, the, uh, the regulators talking the about politicians it. get hooked onto it 5G as uh. it's going to be the holy grail. Uh. The fact is, let's get these services and then 5G will automatically come up. There's no question of it not coming up. When you had the content available, when you had the you know, devices available, 4G became a norm. Mm. It will happen in 5G. But you don't need to create 5G and then wait for, the for things to happen. So it, will, it is an evolution from 2G to 3G to 4G, eventually to 5G, and then we'll be talking about 6G. So this will <laughs> carry on. Okay, let me ask you about, because you mentioned content, and let me ask you about what can be the evolution as far as your content play is concerned, because that clearly seems to be a competitive advantage uh, on the geo side, and they're investing on that. Well, I don't see it as a competitive advantage. No? No. You tell me which customer of mine is missing out on any content. Mm. We have everything. So whatever my customer wants, he gets it. In fact, we get so him. Does that mean you're not going to invest on, on the content side? Absolutely not. We no? can only invest in partnerships. Netflix, Amazon, Z, Eros, Hulu. Get us a content, we'll embrace them. Mm. Okay, uh, so so that that's an unequivocal partnership route that you intend to take as far as content is concerned. Let me also ask you about what's happening on the Infratel side. And uh, again, you've offloaded into a wholly owned subsidiary. When can we expect that stake sale? What are the drivers that you're waiting for uh, before you, in fact, go forward with that? Well, we are waiting for our merger, and merger process is laborious, takes a long time. Uh, there's a shareholders meeting coming up soon. After that, we'll go into the second uh, filing of the motion with NCLT. We expect March, April, the Indus Infratel merger to complete. Mm -hmm. And once that is done, new shares are issued to Vodafone, idea if they want shares or cash, depending on what they want. So once that settles down, we'll start to look for a strategic uh, buyer of significant stake from us and Vodafone. How much would you be offloading? Hard to say at this time. Mm. Yeah. But a ballpark? No. Huh? And how much do you hope to raise? No, it depends. We will, in the merge entity, as per the you know uh, uh, program submitted to NCLT, we'll have about 38% yeah. share in the company, the mm. merge company. Mm. Now let's see how much we want to keep mm. and how much we want to sell. That will determine the uh, amount of money you raise. So the next trigger will be somewhere after March, uh, hopefully if you get the regulatory approvals for the merger. Yeah, I would say summer, sometime in summer. Mm -hmm. Uh, equity issue, is that a possibility? People are talking about a rights issue. Is that something that you would consider? Is that something that you're looking at? It's a possibility. Uh, so you've set up a committee to yeah, look at so fund, fundraising options. Be, I probably already met and they'll be meeting and they have a number of options to consider. And um, they will make a suitable recommendation to the board and um, then a decision will be taken. But what would be the most preferred option given where you stand today? Well, could be rights, could be a preferred uh, allotment of shares. I mean, that's where the focus is at the moment. And I think a matter of four to six weeks, we'll know where we are. Uh, what is the aspiration uh, in light of the deleveraging plans in terms of net debt to equity? What is it that you hope to be, you feel you will be comfortable with? Well, I'd like to be less than two, if you really ask me. But at the moment, we are at about four, four plus. Yeah. And uh, so the first step should be to try to get it below three. And uh, on the other side, if the EBITDA repairs, then automatically you get to two. So it's a function of deleverage a little bit, improve your you know, margins a little bit, and that could 
uh, do the job. Mm -hmm. So with stake sale, with some capital raising of some form, I think we'll be able to get there. What could be the kickers for margin expansion? You've talked about the deleveraging side, and there are several uncertainties that you need to deal with in order for that to go through. But what could be the, the margin kicker? I mean, ARPU improvement. I mean, some customer acquisition as well, but by and large, ARPU improvement. But what will drive ARPUs higher? Just the fact that it, there's, con uh, there's been consolidation? Yes. I mean, the fact is, Indian customer was not complaining when he was paying 300 rupees a month for 800 MB. Hmm. If you can uh, now get 15 GB hmm. a month and still pay... But who's going to hike prices? No, slowly, slowly it'll start to uh, go, go forward. I mean, I'm to, I've told you we've done 35 rupees as a minimum pack. That's the first uh, sign. We've done it for the last few months. And we are uh, rolling it out all over the country. So you're, you're, not, you're not fearful of moving down that road? You're, you're saying that you've taken the first step and you intend to continue? Yeah, yeah absolutely. We, we want to uh, give better value to customers, more innovative services, more bundled... Netflix, Amazon, Wink, Music, uh, Digital TV, all that is, and our bundles are getting a good traction in the marketplace. Mm. And more and more uh, smartphone users are buying those bundles, and we are seeing an improvement. You know, we talked about towers, but what about the fiber side of the business, and what, what do you hope to uh, achieve there? Well, fiber, again, we have already, uh, in fact, we are much ahead of everybody else. Yes. We started this process a year back. Yes. Fiber is being demerged into a separate company. We would like to invite uh, investments there. And how soon can we expect that? Again, waiting for the uh, demerger. Okay, so that is also dependent on getting the clearance and then you start that process. Yeah, that's but closer than uh, towers. I mean, that's much advanced. Okay, yeah. so when you say much advanced, what, what do you mean exactly? March. Okay, so March you will go through with we'll it? We'll have or? a separate company which will run fiber, mm -hmm. which will uh, run its own affairs. We'd like to invite other fiber assets to come and merge with it, like we did it in uh, Indus in Fatal earlier. Hmm. Vodafone brought in their towers, Idea brought in the towers. Hmm. This fiber company will invite every other company who has fiber to come and join. Hmm. On the regulatory side, uh, you know, are you see, of course, that's a big one coming up. Uh, but what else are you seeing in terms of potential figures that could weigh on the business? <laughs> it's done. <laughs> so the worst, is, the worst is over. Now we are so used to it, one of the more things coming to be what could that one or two more things be? Really. What are you anticipating? No, nothing really. I'm saying, but who knows? Surprises are always there. Mm. But right now, I think all the you know things that had to go wrong for us in the regulatory arena has gone wrong. We are all sitting in the courts, and let's see what decisions come out of the courts. But it's pretty much done. It's behind us now. You don't see noise now. Mm. You don't see that you know early days of geo launch picking in a lot of noise, cacophony, uh, bad blood. I think that's settled. Mm. There is no bad blood anymore.